Okay. Yeah, no echo. Woohoo! And we're ready to go. Yeah, so we'll go in three, two, one. Let's do it. Hey, welcome to Just Another Effin' Podcast. I am, of course, the hero of Massachusetts, the Commonwealth, the JFB James from Boston. That's the best one yet. <laughs> and uh, we're here talking about WrestleMania. It's been a week, and we've had a huge week in wrestling. And we have our special guest. Uh, introduce yourself, sir. Hi. So I, I, I'm just Alec from Glasgow. <laughs> <laughs> Alex from Glasgow. Okay. Yes. I try to. I try to make it a wee bit more. How do you put it? Emphasis on the Scottishness there, but that backfired on me. I love the accent. It's great. we got Canada, we got Scotland, we got uh, America. Great. Yeah. Labor. Wicked. <laughs> All right. So, obviously, we're going to talk about WrestleMania. Um, WrestleMania 37 happened uh, this week. Uh, it was a huge, huge week. We had a OK Raw. Uh, we had an OK Go Home SmackDown sandwich. Between those two were, of course, the NXT Stand and Deliver uh, for those two nights on Wednesday and Thursday. And uh, we had the Hall of Fame inductions 2021. But really, let's get to the meat of this sandwich, and that is the two-night extravaganza as Vince McMahon says, Welcome to WrestleMania. But before we start, before we go ahead and kick off night one, I want to say happy birthday to the man upstairs who wears the kilt, plays the bagpipes. Roddy Roddy Piper today would have been his birthday. And uh, as seeing as I'm a huge Piper fan, I just want to give a shout out to Roddy Roddy Piper. And happy birthday, Hot Rod. Hot Rod. The original Canadian hero. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> My favorite as well. Yeah. He was. He we was. All got connections. He's Scottish and uh, Canadian, and yep. uh, he's favorite. <laughs> all right. So night one happened on Saturday night. Uh, we were treated to uh, a somewhat decent card. So we'll go for the first match, uh, which is unusual. It was for the Universal. Uh, what, uh, I'm sorry. It's for the World Heavyweight Championship between Bobby Lashley and Drew McIntyre to kick off WrestleMania. Thoughts on first a championship match of that caliber happening right off the bat, uh, and what did you think of the match in, in in all? I think we should let Alex go first because it's uh, Drew McIntyre Scottish. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, well um, before that, we certainly before that we certainly got some something uh, we've never seen before. Uh, what was it? And in wrestling, well, um, I'm guessing modern wrestling because I, I was I was doing a bit of reading and it has it has occurred is rain delay. So as soon yeah. as they did the whole announcement, um, as soon as they did the whole announcement, all of a sudden there were these uh, rain delays. Yeah. And we had we had uh, all these guys out there cutting promos that um, uh, what was um, I'm, I'm guessing they didn't think they were going to have to cut, which was quite interesting. Yeah, because uh, it sort of led to uh, a, a different feel, you know. Um, it was, a, a, and you sort of, you sort of found out who who was sort of able to do it and who who wasn't mm-hmm. able to sort of cut that. But was it promo off the cuff? Yeah, you know. So I found that I found that interesting, you know. And certainly um, from that, Drew was, was certainly sort of um, it was. Um, Hyped up for the match, yeah. you know. So that was that was very that was very interesting. You know, um, last year, uh, last year's WrestleMania was uh, it was um, obviously Drew won the Royal Rumble, and then uh, it was um, two seconds. Uh, Drew, Drew won the Drew won the Royal Rumble, and um, everything was looking good for a sort of big, big um, sort of party. 
in Glasgow, <laughs> shall we say? <laughs> and then lockdown happened, so he, so he sort of, um, as you know, he sort of said that he wanted to be the first out when the crowds came back. So um, I just wanted to uh, raise that sort of point, and I, I sort of, um, I sort of understand maybe the decision of having Bobby Lashley and, and Drew McIntyre as the first match, you know. And I, and I do apologise if I'm rambling. Um, so what did you think but, of the match, uh, though? Um, I thought it was I thought it was a decent match, you know, a good match to sort of uh, what was it, uh, sort of start off start off with. It was um, um, I've got maybe an interesting perspective on it. From my standpoint is I wanted sort of um, uh, obviously as a Scotsman I wanted Drew to win, you know, but um, uh, what happened sort of to me made sense. I mean I don't know if what what you guys you guys think. I think uh, it's always better. To, for me, watching wrestling, it's always better to ha- uh, what was, uh, what was it? to have that chase, you know, as mm-hmm. opposed to uh, as opposed to what was it? if he'd beaten sort of Bobby Lashley, it would have been uh, it would have been another sort of turning over of the, t- the championship relatively quickly, you know. And uh, what was it? I know some like that, some don't. I don't. I like I like the sort of chase, you know, and uh, and the sort of backstory, you know. And I think uh, there might be Bobby Lashley's. It's going to be a, a great year, you know, for him. Yeah. You know, and um, hopefully at the end of it, Drew, Drew takes the belt off him. You know? Yeah. I think that the WWE painted themselves in a corner by giving uh, Lashley the belt so late. So late. Yeah. And uh, yeah. I think that uh, if Lashley would have lost, then it would have made his championship meaningless. And so they kind of had to make him win. So if they would have had Lashley with that belt a lot sooner, would have been a lot better. Yeah. Um, or had Lashley win it at Mania, which would have been how I would have done it. Yeah. I, I agree. I mean, you know, it was unusual seeing Lashley and, and Drew opening up WrestleMania. You know, that, that belt should be main event belt. You know, it shouldn't be opening belt. You know, but... And I didn't like the distraction where he looked over and that's how he lost. Yeah. No. Yeah. 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 No. I, I'm a huge Lashley mark. Uh, I always kind of have been. Uh, I'm, I'm kind of like Vince in that way. I like the big guys with the big muscles and, and the bigger. But I, and I think he's I think he's our age, isn't he? Yeah, he is. <laughs> he looks great. Yeah. yeah. We look pathetic compared to him. <laughs> but, you, you know, your, your problem is that guy cannot cut a promo to save his life. And, and it's a good thing he's got MVP yeah. because MVP is like the Paul Heyman for the Hurt Business where yeah. you have a mouthpiece to be able to do the work for Bobby so Bobby can just get into the ring, wrestle, kill his opponent, and leave. I, I liked it. I gave it I gave it three out of five stars. I thought it was a, I thought it was so a pretty good match. Since we're not live, um, can you keep track of the time here because I have no clue how long we're told. Yeah, I got I got Yeah, I got it. What are we at right now? Uh, we're at uh, six minutes. So let's cut it off at about 50. Okay. Yeah. So the the next match was the tag team turmoil uh, where we had multiple women's tag team. And, of course, the winner of that was uh, Natty and Tamina. They would go on tonight, too, to take on uh, Jackson Baszler. So thoughts on this match? The, the turmoil match was, that was okay. Yeah. I don't think we need to spend too much time on it. It was no. boring. <laughs> yeah. I, 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 it, it seemed, yeah. It, it just seemed, it, it just seemed like, like they could have put something else yeah. in that spot, you know, um, not to take anything away. You know, uh, as you know, we'll, we'll talk about uh, what was it later about the releases and a couple of people in that match. Yeah. Um, but um, I mean, to me, when you when you speak, when you talk about underrated people, Tamina for me, you know, is yeah, just you know, um, what was it? Um, hopefully, at one point in the latter, just go, you know, yeah, and 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 be who she is and 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 give her a little one, you know. <laughs> But, I um, think it would lead to Natalia and Tamina winning the tag titles. 
Yeah, like, I think yeah. so too. I think eventually yeah. it will be then just because I don't know. I, I Shayna Baszler is better as a as a singles wrestler. Uh and nothing against Nia Jax, but that woman is just dangerous. She works stiff, you know, and so uh I I would like to see Natty have that belt and carry that belt on like her dad did for a couple of years, you know, just back and forth. And I love seeing them do the heart attack. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that was awesome. That was the best part of that whole tag team turmoil match was that right there. And so we, we, we can skip this on night two because we kind of covered it all. Okay. Yeah. All right, so uh, match number three saw Cesaro take on Seth Rollins. And, of course, Cesaro comes out on top. Uh, I'll go first. I'll say this: uh, another boring match, no build-up storyline other than you know a couple of matches here and there on SmackDown. It, it, you know, Cesaro is like one of these great performers, one of the strongest guys in wrestling today, and they relegate him to these stupid, silly move sets and these stupid, silly storylines. You know, and. That guy needs a break. He needs to get in on a championship run, especially with the Universal Championship against. I would love to see him take on uh, Roman Reigns and, and beat him. I'm uh, happy for uh, I'm happy for him getting this push, and it looks like he's going to get that push against Roman here eventually. Yeah. Uh, he's just a wrestler's wrestler. Yeah. He's he's great, and I I did enjoy that match. I enjoyed seeing him go over, and I love that spot with the spin. But WWE is pushing that. They, I think they on SmackDown they showed him like seven times. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Look, he's doing it with no arms. I'm like, <laughs> wrecking it. It's a great spot. I don't. I, I, I don't know how he isn't dizzy at the end of that himself. You know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I get dizzy just watching it. For, for, for me, it was a, 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 it was probably one of the better matches. Say the whole uh, I, two nights, yeah. you know. Um, um, but it was um, I think Seth the sort that, that sort of impasse now where where he's been doing what he's been doing and um, uh, what was it, um, uh, and you sort of wonder where he can go next, yeah. you know. Um, but was it um, again not, not to not to like. Jump back, but the promo he had, he sort of, he, he sort of cut during the sort of rain delay was very strange, you know. Oh yeah, that was, yeah, you know, yeah. it was almost one. It almost you know. made you wonder if he was on drugs or drunk. <laughs> <laughs> this is yeah. amazing. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, I suppose with Matt uh, Matt Riddle and RVD in the, in the sort of uh, locker room, uh, what was it? Um, you never know what's what was it? It's just, so, so, some sort of passive. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that realist is long lost son <laughs> yeah alright so the next match was our tag team title match for the Raw Tag Team Championships it was the New Day versus Styles and Omos and Styles and Omos come out with the win and not only does AJ Styles become the Grand Slam in WWE he's the only one to do it on WWE and TNA slash Impact where he was also a Grand Slam champion. So, Styles and Omos. I, 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 you know what vibes I get from this? Here's the vibes I get. Let's go back to the 90s, where you have the Heartbreak Kid and his big, huge, beefy bodyguard, Diesel, which set up a huge run with them fighting and making up and fighting and making up and then eventually Diesel wins the heavyweight championship. This is how I feel. I think eventually Styles is going to get the championship. He's going to take on Omos and Omos is going to take him out. It's good. It's I like a uh, I think you're giving WWE too much credit. <laughs> uh, I don't know if they're, they're going to let him out of the ring. They have the follow through. It could be a great storyline. Oh yeah, yeah. And uh, yeah. you kind of knew that uh, they were going to win that match. You just as soon as AJ Styles is involved, you're like, yeah, they're winning. Oh yeah. Uh, uh, for, 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 I mean, for me, what was it? Um, I, I, I guess they achieved what they wanted to achieve with the match. The the, the, the sort of 
brought the guy brought the guy in, and he sort of he uh, was it sort of played the big the big giant, you know. Yeah. Um, was that his actual first match? I'm, I, I'm not too sure. I, outside I of the Raw Underground that Shane McMahon had, yeah, that's his first match. Yeah. So what a debut. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Everybody should have that kind of debut on WrestleMania. Yeah. yeah. Jeez. <laughs> All right, next match. Braun Strowman versus Shane O'Mac in a steel cage. Uh, best bump of the night or best move of the night. Uh, Braun comes out as the victor, but when he rips apart the the cage to drag Shane McMahon back in uh, was pretty freaking awesome. Almost as good as going through a hell in a cell uh, or an elimination chamber blast. He rarely ripped the chain off the steel cage and dragged Shane McMahon back in. I I thought it was I thought it was a pretty decent match. The storyline was stupid, you know. Call, That's stupid. Don't call me stupid. <laughs> I'm not stupid. <laughs> Don't call me stupid. <laughs> I overall I I'm a I'm a sucker for steel cage matches and I'm a sucker for Shane O'Mac matches on WrestleMania. That guy pulls out the punches and. How many victories does he have? One. Maybe. If he's lucky, one. He just missed. Yeah. <laughs> uh, he always, he, he, he always, he, Shane always goes, um, he, what was it, what was it, um, to steal a sort of thing, like all in, what yeah. that he's doing, you know, every sort of, every match he has like that, in, in the big stage, he's just, he just wants to do something big, you know, yeah. Um, uh, you know, going back to way, uh, was it way back when he had the match with Kurt Angle, which I thought he had actually been killed, yeah. you know. You know, yeah, we didn't go through it the first time, I'll just put you through it again. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, um, yeah, to me that was a, uh, that, that was a, that was a, uh, I enjoyed that match, you know. I, it was entertaining. I was, yeah. Yeah, I wasn't ex- expecting anything else from it, you know, you sort of, Thought Shane's going to Shane's involved, so there's going to be some sort of um, bump that was sort of uh, what was it um, going to be really cool, you know? Yeah. Um, you know, but uh, yeah, I, I just think Braun, uh, he he sort of now uh, what was it teetering on that sort of big show pop, uh, what was it uh, well white sort of um, scenario yeah, now when he's, he's you know he's just. Um, it was, um, he's there. He's a part of the jokes, and then he gets. He finally gets. The, he gets one, and then he's part of the jokes again. You know, and yeah. you know. You, you want to I feel like the them. time has passed to put the belt back on him because he's. They, they made a joke of him for so long. So yeah. Yeah. Like make him that monster again. Too. No, definitely. Yeah. Uh, next match is going to be Damian Priest and Bad Bunny versus The Miz and John Morrison, and I have to say this was my. This was the match I didn't want to watch. I thought it was just going to be another BS match. This was the dark match of the night. I, this was the underdog match. Bad Bunny actually looked like a legitimate professional wrestler. Uh, decent move set. Did it hurt Karana? Uh, it was good to see Miz and Morrison put him over. Uh, I mean, here's a here's a guy who's living his wrestling. You know, he's a wrestling fan. Gets invited to partake in the WrestleMania match. Holy crap. That guy looked better than some of the jobbers that are in WWE. I, I loved it. Yeah. I thought it was a great match. I mean, Bunny and Priest pulled the win out, but Bunny looked, that Bunny looked legitimately solid for a, 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 a rapper turned professional wrestler. <laughs> yeah, that, that Bunny was the star of the match. Yeah. As far as I can see. Oh, yeah. He was, the, he was the star of night one. It was a good match. I yeah, and and, and uh, what was it? Um, I mean, Morrison and Miz. If you, if there's any, if you if you, if you were ever sort of define what you sort of wrap up the, the sort of term what WWE is, it's it's I think it's they two, you know. Yeah. Um, you know, um, what was it? Um, it's not necessarily about the wrestling and things about like the guys, but they definitely do the entertaining part very well. Yeah. You know. Uh, it's, um, some people like it, some people hate it, but that is what it is, yeah. you know. Yeah, absolutely. And we come to our main event. It is going to be Sasha Banks from the great state of Massachusetts, the greatest city, Boston, versus Bianca Belair 
in a SmackDown Women's Championship match. This was the match of night one. This was probably the match of night two. This was the best WrestleMania of the main event. It was absolutely unbelievable. Uh, Bel Air, Bianca Bel Air takes it from Sasha Banks. And when the cameras went off, people were recording it, but out comes her husband, uh, what's his name from the Street Profits. And uh, yeah, he he came out, hoisted her on his shoulders, and you know they celebrated. That was a yeah, that was a, an, um, that's a WrestleMania moment. Um, I, I I didn't understand when that when that sort of footage appeared online. I'm guessing I'm, I'm guess it was going to be a what was it some sort of documentary, you know? Yeah. Um, that would have been a sort of cool moment to have on television. But then again, maybe they just wanted her to have that sort of moment herself. And yeah. Then have that celebration. Yeah. You know, which was really cool and. You know, uh, it was a great match, but yeah. uh, it wasn't the greatest. Like they're they're saying, it was the greatest WrestleMania match of all time. I think. Ever. Uh, I wouldn't go that far. I put it. I would put it. I would say my top five. This is the best one of all time. Yeah, uh, I put it in my top five. I would put it in my top five. Um, for, for this reason alone, um, Bianca Belair wasn't built up enough for this this match. Oh yeah, yeah. She needed to be built up, and the chase was there, but it, it was just, she won the, the Royal Rumble out of nowhere, and, um, and then she, she had the, the, the great main event, but um, I think uh, the one where Becky became Becky Two Belts was much better for the women's division. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I totally agree with that, yeah. It was good to see yeah. Bianca Belair. That, that, she is a, a natural athlete. And, you know, uh, she went to the University of Tennessee, Knoxville. She did track and field. Um, you know, she she has gas in her tank. I mean, she put on, um, I don't remember how long the match was, but it seemed like it went on for about 25, 30 minutes. I mean, it was, she did not look winded at all. Uh, and, you know, yeah, I, I mean, I liked her when she came on NXT. Uh, I like the cockiness, and and I love the fact that she's got the belt. Uh, nothing against Sasha; uh, she obviously does not do well at at, uh, at WrestleMania. She's zero and five now, uh, but she puts over uh, other wrestlers like there's no tomorrow. Uh, and so you gotta give kudos out to, to Sasha for that. And, and that last, yeah. Sorry, I was just I was just going to say that laceration on, on her chest. Yeah, like, with, with the wet, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. I love lacerations. On <laughs> <laughs> well, let's go ahead and teleport to night two. Night two was on Sunday night. <laughs> and uh, our first match of night two was Orton versus The Fiend. Uh, the Fiend comes out in a jack in the box. Uh,. Looked somewhat. It, it just didn't flow really well. Um, that entrance was great. Oh, the entrance was fantastic. And the tribute to Brody Lee. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. But the uh, Alexa Bliss in all black with this black goo coming and streaming down her face. And the uh, match was relatively short. Yeah, it was. It was a quick match. It was like a good, good five ten like minutes. The build up for that match. How many months was that? And then you, you ended in like was yeah. it fifteen minutes? Yep. And it was. So sorry, I interrupted you there. No, go ahead. go ahead. Go ahead. No, I was just going to. A couple of things that, that I sort of struggled with was that match. I don't like red lights. They yeah. know the red lightning the arena. I I'm not a big oh, fan of that. You know, um, it, it sort of t- it sort of it's too distracting away from the sort of what's going on. And it's and it's, it, 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 as you sort of know, what was it? Um, it was the wrestling. I, I, it's really impressive with everything they've done with the sort of themes and things like that and the, the, the story that they've done and I understand there's a desire for it but um, it, the, the logic behind some of it you know yeah. uh, what was the um, it, for, for me uh, what was it uh, being able to suspend your belief is, is being able to sort of relate and understand how to do things you know and yeah. it, 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 it got a, it got a bit strange you know and I'll leave up to it 
you know, yeah. with the, the black cuckoo and it coming out of Randy's mouth and things like that, you know. Yeah. It was just, yeah. I mean, I, I mean, I understand it, you know. So there was obviously a lot of effort put into it and then for it only to be like sort of, um, I don't I can't even remember, I, 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 it was how long the match was. Was it, was it under 10 minutes, if that? Yeah, it was you under know? 10 yeah, minutes, yeah. Yeah, for sure. I think it was like six, yeah. to, six to 11 minutes long. The entrance almost took as long as the match. <laughs> the, the entrance was really cool though. Yeah. I, I like what they did with the entrance, you know, and uh, uh, Alexa, and, um, what was it, um, and then obviously we'll, we'll see. We'll, we'll see where that goes. Yeah. Uh, going forward. Yeah. A reversal of the roles, I, I suspect. Yeah. Yeah, I totally agree. Uh, next match was Jackson Baszler versus Natty and Tamina. Jackson Baszler took that match. We talked about it earlier. So let's get we'll to we'll skip this since we talked about it earlier. Yeah. So let's go to match three. Uh, Sami Zayn uh, versus Kevin Owens. Uh, Owens takes the win, and also uh, Stone Cold stuns uh, Logan Paul at, at the same time. Uh, I liked this match when it was originally in NXT. I liked these guys fighting when they were fighting in Ring of Honor, when they were fighting on the indie circuit. These guys have a long history, and the WWE found a way to just screw it up by making this, again, no storylines, no build-up. It's just they're relying on these two guys having this chemistry. And when you're not invested, you divest and you just... You get away from it, and that was the problem with that match. I didn't care about Sammy. I didn't care about Kevin Owens. And those and are my two favorite guys. Logan Paul. That was no. Yeah, you know, and they should have. They should have built that match up. You know, they should have talked about the history. I mean, one of my favorite turns was Kevin Owens turning on Sami Zayn in NXT and uh, pop up power bombing him into the edge of the ring and. Even during commentary, they, they sort of inadvertently referred to. The, yeah, we've seen this before. You oh, know, yeah. you know, and to me, and to me is to me, Sammy's one of the most talented. You, you know, yeah. Um, it was a, 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 the character that Sammy's playing just now. I just absolutely. A, what was it? Think. Think yeah. it's, a, it was a, it just so well thought out by him. You know. Yeah. And, a, was it, the whole conspiracy thing. So clever. You know. Yeah. Um, uh, Sammy himself, I love El. Everything he's doing with what he's working with, but yeah, yeah, you could have kept Logan Paul out of that for sure. Oh, yeah, yeah, I didn't understand that one. Yeah, no. that's just you know he's an internet person and it gets more eyes on the prize, uh, which is viewers. So uh, yeah. next match, Matt Riddle versus Sheamus. Sheamus with the bro kick cuts open uh, Matt Riddle, or I'm sorry, just Riddle, and Riddle loses to Sheamus, the U.S. So the new U.S. Heavyweight Champion is. Sheamus. That match was that, horrible. <laughs> that match that, was no, hard. I don't like it at all. Like, <laughs> you have got to have at least a little bit of uh, competition. I, I don't like the squash matches yeah. for championships. And I love Sheamus. Yeah. And I like Matt Riddle. But I did not like this match. This match was flat yeah, out like just it. horrible. See, see, I was hoping. I was hoping for a uh, Drew Sheamus. Because that's what it's sort of leading, you know. Yeah, yeah that ended uh, really quickly. Yeah. Yes. Yes. And um, uh, uh, what was it? Uh, obviously, from where I come from and things like that. I mean, they've, they've kissed each other. What was it uh, before they sort of went to the sort of WWE and the sort of the stories of the battles they had over in Ireland and things like that as well. You know. Yeah. Alex, I think um, you make a really good point. Had they um, just let Lashley fight someone else for the championship at yeah. Mania, yeah. and had. Drew and, and and Sheamus finish up that that matchup. It would have been much better, I think. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Because there was a story there. Uh, uh, they had built it up for months. A uh, what was it? A uh, uh, what was it? Uh, even back when uh, Sheamus brought this the sword out to sort of Drew, you thought I, I was getting excited about it. I was thinking, oh, you know. Um, uh, what was it? Uh, are we going to get to see these two guys at WrestleMania? Yeah. Knowing that, uh, uh, what was it? Um, that they had wrestled locally here, you know, where I stay, you know. Yeah. <laughs> that would have been really cool. But that would have been awesome. It is. Yeah, it would have been, you know. And they are, but I'm sure, uh, hopefully down the line it will happen again, you know. Oh, I'm sure it will. 
And I'm sure yeah. WWE will find a way to screw it up. So, <laughs> Next match, Big E versus Apollo Crews. Apollo Crews has taken on his Nigerian persona. This was a Nigerian drum match. And uh, Cruz comes away with the Intercontinental belt. Uh, I don't again, mind him winning that. Huh? I don't mind Cruz winning it. Yeah, I don't Nigerian either. Gimmick is, is ridiculous. Yes. Yeah. Like, all of a sudden he's got an accent. It's fine that you're crazy in Nigerian heritage, but yeah. you don't all of a sudden grow an accent over there. Well, what's worse is it, it sounds like the accent that Eddie Murphy uses in Coming to America. You know, it's it, there's no originality behind it. And he is, he's Nigerian born, uh, but he came to the States very early in his age. In his age. Um, I just, it wasn't, you know, like I like Big E as the Intercontinental. I thing. think they could really redeem this thing if they had him doing some Nigerian email scams. Now that would be hilarious. <laughs> I'm a Nigerian prince. If you give me ten thousand, I'll give you a hundred thousand yes, dollars. Yeah, if you could really play that up, it would, it would totally be funny. Oh, it'd be hilarious. That would be compelling yeah. TV. <laughs> uh, next match: Oscar versus Rhea Ripley. So Rhea Ripley, a recent call up from NXT, comes to Raw, challenges Oscar, and she takes the belt away from Oscar. So Rhea Ripley is now your Raw Women's Champion. Not as good as night one for the for the other women's title match. Um, I like Rhea Ripley. I thought she did okay, but it would have been a lot better if it was Charlotte Flair. <laughs> I really love Rhea Ripley's look. She's got a unique look in it. Yeah. It's, it's just the, I, I mean, I know it, it's typical sort of WWE uh, with the live band that doesn't always sound the way that it should and things like that. We've, we've, um, we've had that so many times over, over multiple WrestleManias when they've had a live band, you know. Yeah. But just that intro, you know, it, you know, it's just to me, it's just, it, 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 it's just got that cool factor to it, you know, just yeah. that strong, you know. Yeah. Uh, it was, um, it was um, a lot of flopping put into it, you know, and certainly. Uh, I think that, I think that's where the WWE is heading in terms of uh, what was um, where they're going to sort of focus. Yeah. As uh, as Rhea. Yeah. I'm, I'm guessing hopefully we'll have that war with Charlotte and then uh, what was it uh, and then sort of Rhea will uh, what was it go off and uh, what was it uh, be that dominant champion. Yeah. So last match of the night is the triple threat match between Roman Reigns, Daniel Bryan, and Edge, the uh, World Rumble winner. And of course, the head of the table comes through in the triple threat match. Um, Roman Reigns retains. He is the universal champion uh, with probably one of the ugliest looking belts in all the world, uh, the big blue universal belt. Uh, I was kind of I was kind of disillusioned by this match. I thought uh, they protected Edge really good. Uh, they made him look good in spots. He had the spots, but you know, obviously, you know, with neck issues and, and you know, he can't doesn't have the motor that he had ten years ago. Um, you know, Reigns looked uh, as good as Reigns has ever looked. I, you know, and Daniel Bryan looked pretty decent, but. There was something missing from this match, and I don't know what it was, but it was just not... I will tell you what it was. What was it? It was the underdog, Daniel Bryan, winning. Yeah. If Daniel Bryan would have won this match, yeah. and he lost it two weeks later, it would have been fine. Yeah. But Daniel Bryan winning this match would have, would have made this epic. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, Roman Reigns has got many, many years left in his tank. Daniel and, Bryan, you know, not not so much. Him, him beating him beating Daniel Bryan later would have been would have been fine. Oh yeah, they could have done it at backlines, you know. I, I, I will say though, I was a bit annoyed that Daniel Bryan was put into that match after after everything that sort of materialised with you know Edge winning the Royal Rumble, and it was yeah. going to be like ten years after the fact that he had to retire, and you know it didn't make any sense. Well, all three me. of them kind of went through the same thing, so I think that was good. yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it just, um, it didn't make any sense for me throwing Daniel Bryan in. I, I, I get what you're saying. I, I get what you're saying. You know, I, I understand that. You know, but I, I thought the same. 
I thought I, uh, Daniel should have went away with the belt, you know, and um, uh, what was it? Maybe have had a program with sort of Edge, you know, and um, Ray could have went on a little rampage, and finally would have put the belt back on him, you know. Well, I think yeah. I think it was smart to bring Daniel Bryan in only because, you know, nothing against Edge. I've mean, I've been a huge Edge fan since when he debuted in WWE. I knew this kid was going to be uh, a Hall of Famer. Uh, I mean, I was on aboard the Edge train, but when you're dealing with neck injuries and you're dealing with you know age, uh, you know, and, and a body that's decaying. Uh, you have to protect them, and that was the way to do it, is bring Daniel Bryan in. I think it was a great match, though. Yeah. I thought yeah, it was an okay match. match. It the ending, all the endings seem to have to be the bad days. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. <clears throat> and, you know, <laughs> ultimately, you know, Reigns is it, it, Reigns is going to be the new face of this company, whether you like it or not. You know not. why? He wins. Yeah, yeah. He's got that gold glove. It's not the Reigns that it's the Marvel. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So that was night two, uh, and just like last year, uh, some people have, were uh, told and that they were no longer going to be required of their services in WWE. Uh, as always, Black Monday, well, it was Black Wednesday again one year ago. A whole bunch of wrestlers got... So who's, who's released? You got a list there? I have the list. Here's the official list. So Samoa Joe, uh, Billy Kay, Peyton Royce, Mickey James, Chelsea Green. Tucker, Kalisto, Mojo Rawley, Bo Dallas, and Wesley Blake. Those are your official terminated people. What was the big surprise on that list? For me, it was Samoa Joe. Yeah. You know, but he couldn't clear medical. I was pretty surprised with Peyton Royce, too. Yes. Yeah. That was the one that surprised me the most. Actually, it doesn't because after that Raw talk where she kind of did a shoot interview... Uh, when she talked about how she wanted to, you know, either book me in matches or cut me. Maybe that, maybe that's what we no, she, She's got the look, though. Like, oh, yeah. Like, yeah. Absolutely. Like, absolutely. She's as pretty as anyone in wrestling. Yeah, absolutely. She, she is, she is a star. She'll be a star. She'll be a star in, in some I, way. I think she's going to be in AEW without a question. You think she goes to AEW? Oh, without a question, she's yeah. got the hookup with her husband. She's there. Yeah. So, where do you think Samoa Joe goes? I think he's AEW as well. Yeah. See, I think he's yeah. gonna. I think he's gonna go back to Impact. I think he started in Ring of Honor. He transfers over to Impact. He becomes the face of Impact. He was there for all those years with AJ. It would Styles. be a great match with Omega and uh, and uh, Samoa Joe with the the, the, the dueling brands would be. Great. Yeah, that would be true. Yeah, but I was I was really surprised about Samoa Joe. I was kind of surprised about Chelsea Green too. I know she had a wrist injury and they kind of shelved her for a while and then never showed her again as from her call up. Chelsea Green's hot nest gimmick is amazing. Yes, <laughs> and I, I I just love it. It's it's, it's uh, I hope they go back to that and I could see that and they have to put it Well, she sort yeah. of posted uh, the picture, didn't she? Yeah. No. Yeah, her t-shirts. Yeah. Yeah. So um yeah. I, I mean it's it's never it's never good to hear people uh, hey, what was it people losing their jobs and, and where they go where they're going to go, you know. Some of them like um there was, there was talk online that Bowles maybe gonna go away from wrestling. Yeah. You know, but whether that's true I don't know. But he's who again, who's so, gonna be a go away from wrestling? Bo Dallas. Yeah. And that's a shame because He's yeah. so freaking talented. Yeah. He's he's got the genes from his family. I mean uh, Mike Rotunda. Yeah. He said actually Bo Dallas is more talented than Bray Wyatt. Oh yeah, absolutely. Hundred percent. I mean nothing against Bray. Bray cuts great promos. Bo Dallas wrestles great in the ring. That's your two differences. And yeah. I love the Bo Dallas in NXT. He just had that. Oh yeah. Yes. Yeah, he has he has a pizzazz that you don't see that much. You know, you don't see that enough, you know. Him and Richie and uh, the FCW as well, you know. I yeah. Know, oh, yeah. Rich, you know, oh, yeah. Just, you know, um, they, were, they, they were the ones that I, I thought were going to be, you know. 
it's in, it's interesting. You you always you always look back, you know, and and see who see who it was, and you look back at legacy. Yeah. Um, it, as much as I'm a huge Cody fan, um, I thought Ted Ted was going to be the guy. Yeah. You know, I I, I thought Ted was going to be uh, the, the the sort of guy, and and the same sort of interest in this, I thought Bo was, you know, mm-hmm. because he sort of heard what um, Brave was sort of doing, you know, with the sort of stuff in NXT, you know, and uh, what was the, um, but you, you thought, yeah, and absolutely. the WWE, that sort of stuff's got a sort of shelf life. What about Callisto? Could you see him in AEW? Nah. I oh. see him going back in AAA or going to... Well, you could see a match with Ray Phoenix and Callisto. I, I don't. I don't see it. I Nothing against Callisto, but, you know, honestly... If I'm AEW and I want a luchador, I'm going after Andrade. I'm not going after Kalisto. Nothing against yeah, Kalisto, yeah. but he's more he's well, too American. Huh? Is Andrade going back to the mask? Oh, is La Sombra? No, it doesn't look like it. It doesn't look like it from Never what know. Was <laughs> well, his face is money. He's got a handsome face and they're used to it. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> you know. I mean you could do an angle, the yeah. master return, I suppose. Um but do you really want? I, I, I mean, again, it's these things are difficult to talk about because you just hear about, you just hear what t- people say, you know. And I'm being difficult about his character, and, that, and you understand. Well, I, I don't like people saying that. Obviously, being difficult, but his character is obviously passionate and wants to wrestle, and that's why he looked for his release, you yeah. know. But does that sort of guy get into EW where they've got that friendly environment? You know, they don't have that. I want to be the top guy, yeah. you know. You, you, you know, um, they're all sort of cute. For Guys, me, is there going to be anyone else released? I don't think they're over. Um, I, I'm, I'm sure a couple more heads will roll, but there were a lot of people in, in the backstage that got released as well. They got rid of about three or four writers, a couple of producers. So they they cleaned house. I mean, you know, obviously it's financial. You know, when you're eight, you know, when you're WWE, you have. Vince McMahon doesn't have to answer to anybody except for the stockholders and the board of directors, and that's it. What, what, Guys, what, what, I'm excited what, for next week's podcast. Yes, next week's podcast. We have uh, Cody Jones, uh, who is an independent wrestler uh, that I'm friends with on Facebook, and we're going to have him and Ross. One of our, one of our referees from Wrestling. Yeah. He's, uh, he's one of the Canadian referees here in uh, Ontario. Yeah. Awesome. So we're gonna have we're gonna talk to them about you know life as an indie wrestler and and of course you know what it was like wrestling with COVID and you know a pandemic happening you know so all kinds of questions we're gonna get involved with Cody Jones and with the with the referee. So uh, until then, indie, thank- we, it's the indie, indie uh, podcast. Yeah. Yeah. Have they, have they have they sort of um, wrestling events started uh, to sort of start running again in the states and Canada? Or a little they, bit. Yeah. Um, right now in Ontario, it's really bad uh, because um, we don't have as many as vaccines as you guys, so we're, yeah. we're suffering the pains. Yeah. Well, the I I had the AstraZeneca one, and it was. It was a it was a rough rough couple of days. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I got the Moderna and it, it kind of kicked my butt for a few days. Yeah. So Alexander, we thank you for coming on the show. Yeah, thank you for coming on. I'm all the way from Glasgow. Looking forward to having you on again. No, definitely. I look forward to it. Happy Sunday, everyone. Uh, it's me, the Canadian Crush. Oh no, I'm never trying. <laughs> yeah, I'm the JFB. <laughs> All right, we'll see you guys later. All righty.